Scientific advancement has done some amazing things for humanity. It has cured diseases, made our lives better, and even taken us to the moon. Yet, so many people disregard how much these achievements matter, or use them to develop weapons of war. Shouldn't we be helping humanity, not destroying it? If we put more effort towards scientific advancement, we could change all of our lives, save millions of people, and push humanity forward into the future. When President John F. Kennedy challenged the United States to go to the moon, he wasn't just challenging a nation, he was challenging the world to push out into space and advance humankind. He did not just want the U.S. to beat the Soviets to the moon, he wanted to begin a new age in scientific advancement. Once we had gone to the moon, thousands of engineers began coming up with new ideas of what to do next. There are new rockets streamed up that could dwarf the Saturn V, space stations with artificial gravity, and even plans to go to and possibly colonize Mars and other planets in our solar system. Unfortunately, only about one of these concepts for missions ever came about. Have you heard of the Space Shuttle or the International Space Station? In fact, this was only one part of a much larger plan designed to take us to Mars. But sadly, it never happened due to budget cuts. Going to Mars would give us so much information about the solar system, as well as help us with taking care of the Earth. It would unlock so much information that we could use to help the human race. If you couldn't tell already, I am pretty in love with space. And even that may be an understatement. Well, most young kids wanted to be an astronaut at some time or another. I wanted to be the person building the rockets to get them into space. I have been to space camp twice and plan to go again. And in fact, I've basically decided I want to be an astronautical engineer when I grow up, and I'm only 14. At space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, there is a Saturn V they have, and you can walk right up to it. Just an amazing sight. When you look at this in person, it just reminds you of all the technology and all the effort put into it to get us to go to the moon. It's so unbelievable that we were able to do this, that almost 50 years later, people are still questioning it and saying it never happened. Yet it did. And you think, if you think about it, the most powerful computer at the time was over a thousand times less powerful than a common smartphone today. The technology then was so much less than what we have now, but we're not doing anything like that right now. We are seriously limiting our potential for greatness. Even though we were born here, I truly believe that mankind was never meant to die on Earth. Even though someday there will be some kind of extinction event that will just eliminate everything on Earth, and probably none of us will be around to see it, but still, it will happen at some point. Now, we can accept that the human race will die, or we can make sure that doesn't happen. If we go into the stars and leave the cradle that is our Earth, we can make sure that mankind lives on forever. Us, this generation, can make sure that human, the, ra the human race does continue on and lives forever. There's a common phrase that we are the masters of our own fates. Well, we need to be the masters of all of our fates, of mankind's fate. The human race cannot die on Earth. One of the many reasons that we went to the moon was to beat the Soviets, or Russians, in the space race and win the Cold War. All of the technological achievements developed during that time were all done so the U.S. could win in an arms race against Russia. All throughout history, the only times we have ever made large leaps in science or technology is in times of war. Never have we really said, hey, let's spend all of our effort and resources on finding new science and technology and improving the human race. No, it's always been about the military and what they could do. Now, of course, public safety is the government's primary concern but do we really need to be spending 54% or $600 billion a year of our government's budget on this? Why are we building instruments of destruction when we could be building something instrumental to the quality of life? If we put all of our effort into researching new sciences and technologies, we could have incredible results. There would be so much more information learned about how the universe works and how to help Earth and ourselves survive. There, we could cure cancer and other disease, diseases. Make us live longer, fix the environment, end world hunger, colonize another planet. There are thousands of possibilities, and in order for these to become reality, we have to focus on completing them, put most of our time and resources into achieving them, not spend most of it on developing new missiles or fighter jets. We need to make peace with others, set aside our differences, and come together to help humanity. We could change the world. Medical advancements are often slow processes that take many years to develop are just incredibly hard to create. There just isn't any way to find these cures for diseases any faster than we already are. 
and eventually they will help millions of people and save their lives. But right now, there just isn't any way to save the millions of people who have these diseases today. But this is a common outlook on medical advancement. I refuse to believe it. I believe that we could create treatments for all sorts of diseases if we had the money. Money is almost always the deciding factor in how fast something is developed. Yet we're not putting all the money we can into it. We're not putting all of our effort into it. If medical researchers had more money, they would be able to hire more researchers, more equipment, lab space, and other things that would increase the reduction rate of these treatments. Remember the ice bucket challenge back in 2014? They raised over $115 million to voting treating ALS in just eight weeks. The money used from that helped researchers find three new genes that caused ALS, which will help them develop new therapies for patients. This is helping to save lives. And it's just one example of where money made all the difference. If we put this much effort and more into developing new, science, um, new medical sciences, we could save hundreds of millions of lives. Cancer research has not been getting as much attention as this has, or anywhere close to the amount of money, but they have been getting some money. I've been participating in a fundraiser called St. Baldrick's for the past three years. And as you can see, I'm still growing my hair back, as this is what it looked like before I got it shaved this year. This is a very large fundraiser where the participants get their head shaved to raise money for cancer. And that's after I got my head shaved. <laughs> The main thing I don't get about this is why are we resorting to getting people's head shaved or dumping water on their heads for raising money for medical research? No one is putting any research, not many people are putting a ton of money into medical research that aren't charities or other foundations for that. We could have the cure for cancer in just a few years if we put all of our effort into it, but we're not. I don't think many people understand how much money it takes to develop these diseases, or that the money put into it actually matters how much is discovered. How many people do you want to see die until we have ways to stop them from dying? My grandmother smoked for most of her life, and because of that, she ended up getting pancreatic cancer. The doctors had almost no way to treat that then, and she ended up dying in 2006. Even now, the survival rate for pancreatic cancer is only 20% at its highest, and the disease is considered to be largely incurable. I barely even remember my grandmother, and only have pictures and stories from my parents to remember her by. There may have been almost no chance for my grandmother, but we can give future people a chance to live from this and other diseases. It only took $115 million to create new treatments for ALS. It may seem like a lot of money, but there are hundreds of billions of dollars out there that we could use to spend to help cure these diseases. We just have to try more. Now, others may not see the purpose of scientific advancement over military advancement, but I certainly do. As Werner von Braun once said, science does not have a moral dimension. It is like a knife. If you give it to a surgeon or a murderer, each will use it differently. I want all of you to be the surgeon, to go in and help the world. We, we as a species could achieve things that have only been dreamed about. Are you going to help with that?